Stainless steels are all around us. With over 150 grades of stainless steels in use today, what makes each family unique? Hi, I'm the Alloy Geek, and in this video, we dive right into the different families of stainless steels. Stainless steels are simply iron metal alloyed with a minimum of 10.5% chromium. Now this prevents the iron from rusting. Enter the term corrosion resistance. The addition of chrome also improves the heat resistance as well. There's some debate about the word stainless, as 10.5% chrome will not provide oxidation in all environments, specifically corrosive or high temperature environments. Let's start with the most common family of stainless steels, austenitic stainless steels. Now these alloys make up about two thirds of all stainless steels produced. In fact, 304 stainless steel accounts for half of all stainless steels produced by itself. For this reason, austenitic stainless steels such as 304 are typically about what we think of when we think about a stainless steel. These alloys have a microstructure that is austenitic, which is where the name austenitic stainless steel comes from. This special microstructure is achieved through the addition of about 8 to 12% nickel. Austenitic stainless steels are common in cookware, cutlery, kitchen equipment, and they can be used to resist acid attacks by adding a small amount of molybdenum or moly. Another family of stainless steels are ferritic stainless steels. Now ferritic stainless steels can have a ferrite microstructure and contain between 10.5 and 27% chromium. While these alloys have a minimum of 10.5% chrome, they only contain a small amount of nickel, sometimes less than 1%. It's not much. An example of ferritic stainless steel that we are all familiar with is 409 stainless steel. 409 is found in many automobile exhaust pipes. Next up, martensitic stainless steels. Now martensitic stainless steels have a microstructure that is heat treated to contain martensite. In order to achieve martensite, you first have to heat that alloy all the way up to 1050 degrees Celsius. You have to quench that alloy in oil or water. The resulting microstructure is called untempered martensite, which is far too brittle for most applications. The now brittle alloy is then again heat treated at at least 500 degrees Celsius and then air cooled to reduce the brittleness in the final product. A common example of martensitic stainless steel is 17,4 pH. And that leads us to the next family of alloys, precipitation hardened stainless steel. You may have guessed it, the pH at the end of 17,4 refers to precipitation hardened which is another mechanism to improve the properties of a metal through heat treatment. Precipitation hardened alloys are heat treated using an aging heat treatment mechanism around 475 degrees Celsius. This precipitates niobium or copper rich phases that further increase the strength of that alloy. Lastly, let's talk about duplex stainless steels. Now duplex stainless steels have a mixed microstructure of both austenite and ferrite. These alloys typically have a higher chrome between 19 and 32%, up to 5% molybdenum or moly, and a lower nickel content than their austenitic stainless steel counterparts. The lower level of nickels make this alloy family less expensive to produce, as nickel has historically been an expensive metal. Duplex stainless steels have a big advantage over austenitic stainless steel, having about twice the yield strength. The metallurgy behind the microstructure provides duplex, duplex stainless steels with improved corrosion resistance to chloride stress corrosion cracking, making them desirable in applications in seawater. Now I should mention that alloys such as 410 only contain lower levels of chrome and nickel, and they can rust spot over time when they're exposed to your environment. Think like the moisture in your shower. If you ever purchased an inexpensive item that was made of a stainless steel that started having rust spots in your home, it was most likely made from a 400 grade or a low austenitic grade of stainless steel, which does not offer the same level of corrosion resistance we've come to expect from the standard alloys such as 304 stainless steel. That's it for this video. Click here to learn how to sort the most common austenitic stainless steels, 304 and 316. I've also included links below where you can find the right metal analysis device to test your metal. If your organization works with metals and you want my help in finding a solution to identify and sort your metals, please reach out using the information found in the description of this video.